And I was informed by um, electronic mail that um, I was to be your chair for the evening. I tried to hold out for a desk for the evening, but was told that the shipping charges will be unbearable. So I'm just your chair for the evening. This is the what um, Northampton Conservation Commission meeting for October 14th, and it is a beautiful day today. And um, on the agenda, um, oh, first of all, we're a, a commission of unpaid volunteers. The purpose is to administer the State Wetlands Protection Act, as well as the um, Municipal Wetlands Protection Ordinance. It's a fairly short agenda, but power pack tonight. Um, we have a public hearing on uh, to amend the Conservation Commission land use regulations. And we have a uh, review and approval of updated Mont View management plan. Now, if, if this is a, uh, a public meeting, so if there are public comments, they have nothing to do with anything on the agenda, then uh, now is your time to speak. Otherwise, we'll take up your comments uh, during the appropriate uh, public hearing and uh, view management plan discussions. So we will launch right into the public hearing, not hearing any comments. Uh, to amend the annual the amend the uh, Conservation Commission land use regulations to add bow hunting as allowed activity in Rocky Hill Greenway to reflect historic use of the area and to update the Rainbow Beach regulations to current state wildlife management area regulations. So I'm not sure how you want to proceed with this, Sarah, do you want to uh, go into uh, the regulation changes? Yeah, I can give a quick overview, if that would make sense. Um, so the commission had discussed in the past, potentially allowing bow hunting only at areas where hunting had taken place prior to the commission's acquisition of a property. And the, the Rocky Hill Greenway was one of those areas where hunting has definitely taken place over the years. Um, and the commission thought that that might be a good place to potentially allow hunting. Um, so that's, that's first up. And then the, the clarification to the wildlife management area regulations is related only to Rainbow Beach because we have a partnership with the state uh, fisheries and, and wildlife department. The, the regulations at Rainbow Beach um, have to include the, the state WMA regulations. And those have been amended slightly to clarify some issues about dogs and other items. And rather than listing all of those separately as we had in the past, it seemed to make sense just to refer to the appropriate website. So that's the, that's the proposed change there. Could we talk about the first issue, uh, the bow hunting issue? Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that, ma'am. Uh-huh, okay. Just doing an overview right now of the changes that we're going to go through tonight on okay. the land use regulations in general. Um, and we'll get to Rainbow Beach a little bit later, but um, uh, first we're going to talk about the um, Rocky Hill Greenway, um, which not only inc includes the, the old golf course, but also a big a section of land up near the uh, company that puts the smell in the gas line up off of Route 9. Right. That's all part of the Rocky Hill Greenway. That has traditionally been hunted. Um, it doesn't have a lot of um, 
residential area around it, I don't believe. But the uh, golf course does have some uh, residents mm -hmm. in the back of it, I think, and then um, along the road. Well, we can see it from our home. Yep. Right. And bear in mind that I, I believe, uh, you can correct me, Sarah, if I'm wrong, that the current hunting regulations don't allow hunting within 500 feet. So the, a, uh, according to state law, a firearm or bow cannot be discharged within 150 feet of a road or 500 feet of a structure. Mm -hmm. Well, that more or less confines into the center of the golf course. I believe that's the area that's been most controversial. Mm -hmm. um, I want to ask commissioners first if they have any um, opinions or comments one way or the other as far as um, allowing the archery and only archery during the turkey and deer season. Mason, I see that Sarah circulated, um, you know, a red line added to track changes sort of version of the regulations or the proposed changes to the regs to, or the bylaw. Do you think it makes sense to kind of go through each change one by one as per the track changes and kind of talk about it in that fashion? Um, I think most of the changes that were redlined um, are, are, are with the uh, Rainbow Beach area. And, um, we, those were actually, it would be saying them all over again. Um, these were all changes that were in, included in the new um, management, uh, you know, from the, the State Division of Fish and Wildlife had all these, these changes in it anyways. Um, so we've yeah. just been repetitive to uh, include them in our management area. We can simply do it with a reference. Okay. But uh, adding Rocky Hill Green, Greenway to um, uh, first page, yeah, the first page under hunting trap. Previously, it wasn't added to our regulations because at the time the regulations were updated, we had not uh, acquired that area. But it is uh, a as with the other areas under section B, hunting and trapping, these were areas that were traditionally um, hunted prior to our um, acquiring those properties. And uh, in the commission's uh, contention all along that if an area was previously hunted, that um, we would continue that use. However, we would restrict it to just archery and just for the uh, the deer and turkeys. Could uh, could we ask a question about the history of the hunting um, being allowed on that land? Is this the proper time for a question? Um, I was going to get um, commission opinions first, and then we'll we'll open it up to a general discussion. Thank you, Jen. Go ahead. Um, I kind of have a similar question, actually, of just what the recent history of hunting on the property is, um, whether it's explicitly banned right now or whether in the last couple of years there has been active hunting. And then um, I was also wondering if um, anybody knows exactly what the range of deer and turkey season is. So, um, and I'll look up, the, to get to your second question, I'll look that up yeah. in, in just a minute. Um, but as soon as the pro is a property is acquired by the city under the current land use regulations, hunting is no longer allowed, uh, regardless of whether it had been allowed in the past. So any change to that would require a public hearing like the one we're doing today um, to, to go ahead and change that. But, but prior to the city's acquisition, both of the golf course and the surrounding Rocky Hill Greenway, it, it, had, it definitely had been hunted. Well, I, I don't, can I, I, I believe I would disagree with that. And, and I don't have the accurate history of the city for sure. I'm sure you know better than I, but there are some very old signs on that property that say no hunting 
that I think you know were present when Pine Grove was a golf course. Um, it, it may have been hunted illegally, as far as we understood when we moved here 18 years ago, that the hunting was illegal but was going on. So I, you know, I that's why I'm curious about the actual accurate history of hunting being allowed on that property. As far as I know, the previous owner had allowed hunting when the golf course was closed, but not when it was open. Because it's always been a safety issue of people, skiers, people walking, families, children, dogs on that property and hunters, um, you know, commingling with, with walkers. Uh, we're like I say, we were restricting it as to the the deer and turkey. And I'm not sure exactly when that is. I'm not a turkey hunter or deer hunter. As far as we uh, see, they come through our yard all year all year long. Herds of turkeys and herds of deer come through our yard and go across the street to the golf course, which is now Rocky Hill. Yeah, yeah it's part of the Greenway. Right. Um, I've got a question. I'm just wondering what the regulations stipulate 150 feet from roads, 500 feet from buildings. What does that mean for the rail trail that cuts through that piece of property? Is that considered a road um, within the regulations? That I, I was actually looking into that today. I'm not quite sure about that. The exact language from the state statute is 150 feet of a, a paved road, um, but we would have to get some clarification about whether that would be considered a road or not. Mm -hmm. I would think it would be a well-traveled road. This Definitely is... paved. <laughs> yeah, yeah not, not a path or a trail. Hey, Sarah, the, the other question I have is, is how much, I mean, how many trail, how much trail, um, I guess, how many trails are being put into the, the former golf course property? Because if you look at Rainbow Beach and, and Beaver Brook, you know, when I look back, I wasn't on the commission back then, but when I look back at all of the statements that uh, why those were chosen and why bow hunting was allowed was because they were um, rarely visited properties. Mm. Um, do you know what trail, I, you know, I've seen, I think I've seen the plans for the trails that were going to go on the former golf course, but from my understanding, they're pretty, pretty extensive. Yes, they're all over the land. And there are lots of people coming every day, walking with dogs and children and senior citizens. Including going into the woods, deeper right. into the woods, trails are continued. Right. And there's homes being built right up on the hill. Five homes. How would it, this proposal for the, the bow hunting, how would it work? Would, would walkers be told to stay out or how, I don't understand how there could be what's happening now along with bow hunting without having a death. Um, I'm not sure how that would work. Sarah, do we, are, are we having like a conservation commission discussion that we then open up to the public for comment? I just wanna clarify the process here so we can all get a chance to speak. Yeah, I, so it, it is at the discretion of the chair. So Mason, if you did wanna limit it to commission discussion initially and then open it up for public comment, um, you, you definitely could do that. I believe I pointed that out. It's kind of gotten away from us. Um, I asked for commission comments first. Sorry. Okay. Commissioners, please, please speak your mind. I just want to comment. I you live off Grove Street, have property there, and I've been in this area quite a bit and understand that even if there were some you know, uh, limits on 150 feet from the trail, 500 feet from a building, that the, the property itself is still pretty constrained. And I think it would be difficult to enforce those in the small area there, especially with the wide open spaces at the former golf course. Um, and 
I, I use that area a lot and understand the 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 appeal of going there and um my inclination is to say that this is something that may not be enforceable if we're to limit within that area a smaller geographic area for for bow hunting itself might be might be challenging considering the constraints of the area and i <clears throat> wouldn't that wouldn't anybody in violation of those, those are state laws, wouldn't that be in risk of their hunting permit? Like that's both a land use issue, but also just a, a law. Yes. And there's a lot of overlap of hunting and recreation in Massachusetts. And that's what hunter training and those state laws are for and I, I'm not a hunter but I, I in my opinion I think this area much like Rainbow Beach is extremely undesirable for most hunters they probably would not go there um, and and I think this is more more than anything a gesture for inclusion for different people that use land in different ways including hunting um, more than anything, you know, I, I don't think there'll be piles of hunters looking to go there because lots of people will be there walking and no one wants to be hunting and have families out walking and have fun. That's just, yeah, that's my opinion. I do support the hunting there and changing the regs, but I really don't see it changing much from a land use perspective for the general public in any way. Yeah, and, and my I, concern is, is uh, I think it's going to be a much higher usage than Rainbow Beach or Beaver Brook. Um, and, you know, when I went back, a lot of the discussion was excluding, and, and it may fall in between the two, you know, there's, there's the higher use ones like Fitzgerald Lake and Solomon Hulls and things like that. And there's the very low use ones where we, we've allowed bow hunting um, to continue. I, my concern here is, is really because of the trail development, because the bike trail is going to go through there um, next to where that compressor station is, that it's going to see a much higher degree of use than um, Beaver Brook and Rainbow Beach. So I'm, I'm not as comfortable with hunting um, as I was when, when we were thinking of just when it didn't include the golf course. Um, so I think that's when the, the conversation first uh, started. Perhaps we should, um, we should split the uh, area up into properties that were wooded and hunted, like the, the area up by the, uh, the gas plant there. I, I have no problems with that area being hunted because it's traditionally it was hunted in the past. And it's, it's not a huge residential neighborhood there. And I, have, I have no problem with the archery hunting in that particular area, but I don't know how to, to split designation. It was called before, Sarah, you know, say the Jones area of the Greenway, uh, Rocky Hill Greenway could continue on, and, and that would be the area that we would allow the, uh, the archery hunting in. I just uh, shared my screen to show the area that's known as the Rocky Hill Greenway. Uh, this is the golf course area, also includes a parcel to the south that was owned by the golf course, but was not developed as part of the golf course. And then the, um, the, the area acquired separately, shown over here. And the, the approximate firearm and boat discharge areas where that would not be allowed pursuant to state law are shown in red. And where's the uh, where's the area by the, the gas plant? Is that shown on this map at all? So that's uh, that's this area here, and that actually is shown in red because that is a structure, but it is not an occupied structure, so that should actually be taken out of the red area.
Um, I know there are plans for a connection between Route 66 and the bike trail in the future. Um, is that something that we should take into account as commissioners or something that we would have to address when that when the plans for that would be coming up? I don't know what the timeline is for that. Uh, that's a few years out at this point. Um, that's planned to come through basically through here. So in the, the Northeast section of the Greenwood. But we should take it into account. I believe yeah. that that's, um, I mean, it's, it's the next piece of the trail that's gonna be built. Sarah, will you point to that one more time? Sure. So it's uh, it's coming from Route 66 here along the existing trail that, that goes near the natural gas plant, basically down through here and connected to the bike path. And again, I can check with, with uh, the state fishing game to see whether their interpretation of the state law would be that um, a, a paved bike path would be considered a roadway. I suspect that it would, but I don't know that for sure. Is that something that we could superimpose in the allowance if we, like, could we include it even if it's not included in state law? Uh, you certainly could. Um, the challenge with adding anything over and above state law is going to be enforcement, but the commission's free to, to add any additional regulations or restrictions as you see fit. Um, I just had one more comment, Mason, um, and then a, a question again. Um, and I, I'm really looking forward to hearing public comment. I'm still undecided on this, though generally in favor of hunting for, um, you know, the regulation of deer populations and for all of the reasons that Jason mentioned. Um, I just the, just quickly, often like the most active hunting times are very early in the morning and at the very end of the day, which doesn't tend to often overlap as much with the recreational uses on a property. Um, and then my question is, I know that there's a bow hunting only season and I'm curious still kind of when the turkey and deer seasons are and whether they're like when that bow hunting only window is. Thank you. Uh, so here's the, the seasons for this year. Uh, so currently, and that's just the way it's proposed now because it's, uh, mm -hmm. that's what the commission had decided to do at Beaverbrook Broadbrook. Uh, it's open during all seasons. So if you're, if you're an archery hunter, for example, you could also hunt during shotgun season. Mm -hmm. And that's the way that that's allowed at Beaverbrook Broadbrook. So that would begin um, in the middle of October and then go through the end of the year. But if the commission wanted it to limit, wanted to limit that just to the, the archery only season, then yeah. that would be mid-October mid through um, about Thanksgiving time. Okay. It's Thank gonna you. be a little different every year around that. I just wanted to put that on the table as another option is a shorter window of just the archery season. That's all I have for now. Well, we're looking, we're going to include turkey from, well, the youth hunt, but like, well, they have a spring hunt too. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, uh, not, the, I'm not sure. Whether... I think the reason the commission had decided to go with turkey as well uh, for Beaverbrook Broadbrook is because that season does overlap with deer season in the fall, so that seems to make sense. Yeah. But I can see the concern with um, with residents. Um, do they wear? Do they have to wear orange when they go out for their walk with their dogs during those? I don't know. Like that, like I say, I, I I'd be favor in favor of, of archery only in up near the natural gas company, but. 
not so crazy about it being down in the uh, golf section of the north, I guess, golf course. I don't have so much concern there. I'm not sure of the trail system though. So the trail system is going to end up in there or it's already there. Sections of the woods have not walked that property. So I took it over and I'm not a golfer. I don't know if that golf will be there. Yeah, and Mason, if, if we don't end up concluding the public hearing tonight, we should probably go and wander <laughs> to see how extensive the trail system currently is. I, I, I went there when the golf course was closed initially, but I haven't been back for a while. No. I, I walk there with my kid and my dog often, and it's, it's extensive. It goes all through the golf course and into the woods in many areas. Um, yeah. I'll add that there is currently a pretty easy way to sh to get from 66. You can, I don't know if it's a formal trail or if it's a little bit more bushwhacking, but you can get to the bike trail through past the, the gas um, building, as you mentioned, Mason. Yeah, um, it's definitely possible and relatively easy to get through there. And you can see it's pretty well traveled. And, and that will be the approximate route of the multi-use path once it's going to work. There we go. I have one more question. Um, Sarah, maybe you know how big this area is compared with the, the Broadbrook uh, conservation area where hunting is all, uh, this type of hunting is also allowed. Is it, I know it's smaller, but like how much additional area does this really provide it within Northampton for bow hunting? Uh, so this would, the, the entire area is about 200 acres, and uh, Beaverbrook, Broadbrook. Beaverbrook was what, I, nine acres? I believe it's about 120. Oh, yeah. When I looked it up, I think it was 102 for Beaverbrook and uh, 48 acres in Rainbow Beach. Being the geek that I am, I went and looked at the percentage of hunters is, is a percentage of Massachusetts population, and then the percent I was trying to figure out, you know, how we set aside sufficient land to rep, you know, to represent that population. Like I said, I don't have a problem with the wooded area, north of yeah. the golf course, but I don't know how extensive the trail system is. We have. Taken over the trail system, and there's well maintained trails, kind of like you have at uh, around Fitzgerald Lake, where they're well established and maintained. And they're um, hunting, as, as far as I know, I thought we had a um, distance um, in the Fitzgerald Lake area. Hunt within, I don't, I don't know if it was 100. If you have an extensive trail system, you start 150 foot setback lines. I don't know how much left um, hunting. If there's an extensive trail system in the golf course. I, I, I can't see any hunting going on in the lower section. Maybe the area. Wooded section. I'm not sure how many acres, whether it's worth hunters even getting in there. I don't know how they. I assume they would have to access it through 
designated. Lisa, phrase. are you talking about the section of Fitzgerald Lake where hunting used to be allowed? Yeah. Yeah. So that the commission changed that a few years ago because as Fitzgerald Lake grew around it, it just yeah. didn't seem to make sense anymore. Okay. So there's no hunting at all in that area. Correct. Yeah, okay. Well, what does the commission think? We want to uh, schedule a site visit before we make the decision? No, it's up to you. I, I support the proposed change myself, the way that Sarah has amend, amended the, the draft here. Which generally would include the, golf, the whole golf course. Yes, that's true, I suppose. Yeah, and, and, and I don't. I'm, I think I'm with Denise, and I'm, I'm very uncomfortable having hunting where we have an extensive trail system because I expect usage will, there, there is no real good trail system down this end. I mean, you hear Mount Tom, we have Ar Arcadia, um, but this one's ideally suited for a large population once the bike trail's there. Um, I, I just see that it, it will evolve. Someone like Fitzgerald Lake evolved and uh, there, there will be greater chance for hunter hiker conflict. Commissioners? Yep, I would agree with Randy on that, on um, what he just said, uh, especially in the, the area that was previously the golf course. Um, but generally, considering the, the size of the full plot, I think, and the, the proposed and the to be constructed connection between on uh, bike trail connection between 66 and the bike trail. Um, I agree with Randy that the, I think the whole property um, would, that you'd see conflicts there uh, with hikers and walkers, dog walking and, and hunters. Are we, are we just talking the golf course section of the green greenway? I'm, I'm, I was discussed, I, I think the golf course section especially, but I, I think as well the the wooded portion, considering the extensive trail network and the proposed and the to be constructed connection between Route 66 and the existing bike trail. Any other comments from commissioners? Yeah, I'll just add that I think it's important to, I guess, just think about other user groups that maybe might not often feel welcome on our properties. And, you know, I say that as someone who doesn't hunt and is a vegetarian, but considering that the, the hunting seasons are very limited, the times are very limited. I think if, if allowing hunting and allowing those users to access the land for a very small window of time and having that be a slight inconvenience for some people, I think that's fair. You know, these are folks like all of us that are residents and taxpayers and contribute. And I think considering their access to the land for their activity, that's a worthy discussion. Okay, my, my feeling is um, to allow the archery on a, not the whole of the, uh, the green wave, that wood section north of the uh, golf course. The other, the rest of the boundaries, the northern boundaries of Greenway. That's, and that, especially the northern section, traditionally hunted prior to our acquiring property. But that's just my opinion. I don't know if the trail system is been there in years. I walked a section up by the gas plant. Not, not the uh, golf course section. I don't know what the trail system is like, but we could superimpose proposed um, Greenway Trail comes up 66 on the maps and I give us an indication. I don't have that drawn on there. So I would, I'd be in favor of maybe extending the meeting to Get that information. All the seasons. 
and we have a ratio, we have a map that shows how the, uh, the limits of the, according to the hunting laws, go and can't go. But how that's going to be marked out in the field, I don't know. How it's going to be marked around the trails, I don't know that either. But um, what's the commission's um, sense now? Do you want to hear from people who are here now? Um, or do you want to table this till we take a look at the site again, get a, a map that shows perhaps the trails on it? What do you guys? I don't know. Yeah. Could we have the public hearing portion and then can we decide after that whether we make the decision today or gather more information for the next meeting? Is that possible? Yeah, we can go ahead and, and hear from, from the people who are here now, which is my sense anyway. I hear from them. And, um, the other way around. That's fair. Is there anyone in the public other than us too, or uh, is it all commissioners there, just in us? If, if people just want to either physically raise their hands if you, if you don't know how to do it or press the hand raise button, uh, I, I could just go through um, one by one and people could, similar to city council, just say what, what's on their mind. Um. Ed, is it uh, Mr. Burge? I don't see anyone else. Yeah, uh, Renee, you. Uh, Eric Broadbent has his hand up. Yeah, I recognize that looks, that looks like Renee Burge. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, it's uh, Tiberge, Renee Tiberge. Oh, Tiberge, okay, sorry. So, um, I'll try and be succinct, but I heard a lot here that I, I wanted to uh, respond to and um, perhaps other people can answer some things. Um, I want to speak first to the uh, system of trails. Uh, I'm one of uh, probably like a dozen people who are volunteer trail maintenance people on the property. Um, we live in the neighborhood for the most part at, or butters and uh, I think all of us use the, the uh, trail system there extensively. Um, so uh, from walking the trail uh, or parts of the trail practically every day of the week for the last couple of years, I can tell you that it covers um, virtually every aspect of um, the golf course property. Uh, there's part of the trail um, goes around the perimeter of it and part of it uh, other trails cross it both vertically and horizontally. Um, and part of the trail goes into the, an extensive part of the trail goes into the woods and in fact connects down to the proposed bike path um, trail uh, coming uh, from the top of the hill down into it. And I can tell you from my own experience and my, my son's experience, who's, he's a biker, uh, people bike up and down that trail from the bike trail uh, up to Route 66, there is a clear pathway. In fact, I've worked on that to help uh, keep it clear. So there's there's use back and forth. Um, and just as a, a quick aside, because it was not at all mentioned here, and I don't know how it ties in, but there is a sign at the end of Ice Pond Road that leads to a path that goes up to Rocky Hill Co Housing that says Rocky Hill Greenway. And I think that, uh, I have read that there is plans to extend this all the way up there. So, you know, that's something also that would want to be taken into account. Um, the second point I wanted to make about was about the use of hunting. There has been um, illegal hunting. I've talked with a number of people who live in the neighborhood and know the history of the place. And I have seen <clears throat> and uh, talked to uh, Tom and Nice um, that there, have been illegal blinds that have been taken down there at various points uh, along the pathways that are in the woods. Um, and 
I just want to make a point from my own experience, previously living in Amherst for a number of years in a rural part of Amherst uh, near Shutesbury, uh, and I was surrounded by about 300 acres of woods. And we had hunters there all the time walking up and down in front of our house in a residential area. So the quest, this question of restricting the use in a, in a much more limited area, um, I, I have to agree with those who say they don't see how it can be restricted. In fact, when walking there, um, I have seen trucks of hunters before the gate was put on the, uh, the center pathway where the, the sign is now, um, people would drive trucks down that road into the middle of the place, get out of their trucks with guns and start walking around. Fortunately, that doesn't seem to recur as much. So, you know, the, the potential for conflict is there. When we lived in Emerson, we had the hunters in the woods near us. Basically from mid end of October through the early spring, we did not go in the woods where we had pathways that we had access to. So I, 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 it's an area that I don't think should be open to hunt, hunting. I, I heard um, the commissioner's report, I think Jason Perry, I, I'm sympathetic to what you say, it should be access for hunters in lots of lands, but um, I think there's a lot of hunting access around this area already. And I don't see um, that this small parcel of land, which is used on a daily basis um, by many people, uh, needs to be added to, to that number. Um, and I'll, I'll stop there. Thank you. Um, Rosie R. Hi, thank you for this very um, important, respectful conversation. I live at 306 Rocky Hill Road, just around the corner from Old Wilson Road. And I too use um, the, the new forest um, and use the the golf course in the winter for hiking, snowshoeing. I'm a runner um, and I also walk my dogs on leash. Um, I've enjoyed the extensive trails that are being developed that was mentioned, they were mentioned by Renee. And I won't say a whole lot more other than one point that was missed. Um, as you walk down the road into the power plant, there are trails that lead directly to the trails connected to the golf course. So I, I don't feel that would be a safe place for hunters coming from the golf course area to the, the power plant. And if you, if you wanna check that out, that, that makes perfect sense. Um, I come from the Berkshires, a family of hunters. Um, I have you know, no problem with people that hunt, um, but I, I agree that I do not feel this is a good area to have even limited hunting. I use the trails in the area. I've been inviting friends and family to begin to explore it. Um, I, I don't think the, the piece of land is big enough to really even um, be that much of an important area to hunt when there's so many turkeys out in the woods in areas close by that could provide legal hunting. So I'll end with that. Thank you so much for this discussion. And I hope you know it helps if you come visit it to check out all the trails because it's really impressive. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, uh, Eric. Hi, thank you. Um, uh, w my wife and I used to live in a town where this very issue was considered by the Conservation Commission and there it was a town with more open wooded space and they were, the upshot was that they allowed it because of the deer population. Um, and so I am sympathetic to that as well as in general a, a use by all constituencies. But I, in this case, I don't think it is, again, an appropriate area that the trails do go into the woods. The wooded areas are not the majority of the acreage. The majority of the acreage is um, the open meadows that were once, um, you know, the golf course. So I, I don't imagine that hunters would be out there. They would be in the fringe areas or in the woods where there are trails. Um, I'm interested in the historic use. Um, my wife and I did purchase the 
some of the residential areas that are abut and including the old golf cor golf course clubhouse and we're, we're actually building our house there and um, Gil and Gil Varillo, who was the golf course operator, gave us a stack of signs that he had been putting up over the years, no hunting. And I gave them to Tom Anise, and he put some up. Um, so I don't, I, I was wondering whether historic meant um, the native, you know, the indigenous peoples. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think there was historic use of lands. I'd be curious if people know anything about that. Um, uh, uh, I believe somebody mentioned enforcement, which is interesting. When the trucks that Renee talked about were in, one of the reasons they were doing that was to get the carcass um, and carry it out. I would imagine that the enforcers of this, if there were regulations, would be private citizens. I don't think there's a st enough staff to actually try to regulate the use of this area in that way. And that would be very difficult. There's enough people that would be intimidated by that, um, and I'm not sure hunters would be sympathetic. Also, um, hunting, at least in Pennsylvania, is you can't do it after dark. So at the end of the day, your hours are limited for hunting. So, and that's also when people are getting off of work and doing, you know, their hiking and biking and exercise. So I, I think there's a clash of interests here, and I am sympathetic to multi-use, but this property seems like not the right place. It's an enclave near the, the city of Northampton and people really do use it heavily and so allowing hunting as another use I think is going to it's going to create some problems. Thank you very much. I appreciate this hearing. Thank you. I like your backdrop. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Uh, yes, ma'am. Hi. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. We had the same question about the history. That's why in the beginning we, we were wondering what the history was. We understand Jason's point is very important about inclusivity and allowing multi-use, but also as Eric and Renee have said, it is used extensively now by walkers all times of the day. Um, and Jen, I know you had a good point about early morning, late in the evening, but that's when we see people out jogging with their dogs, 5, 30, 6 o'clock, and then late, as Eric said, when people get out of work. So, uh, and having lived here, we live on Old Wilson, we're directly across from the Rocky Hill Greenway right now, we can see um, the green from our front lawn. And over the years, there were trucks with hunters, even though Gil on the golf course had put up signs, there were trucks with the hunters and rifles coming right out, right in front of our house. So we always wondered what, you know, would it be a bullet through our window? Um, so we agree people need places to hunt, but this is very much used for walkers and joggers and bikers and people and kids and dogs um, all hours of the day right now. And it's, it's been lovely during COVID, the families are out and coming down Old, Old Wilson Road every day and every evening. So that's all, you know, our question was, how would it be enforced if it was a multi-use property right now? Who would do the safety issues? Uh, who would take care of that? Enforcement would be the state game officers. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know the extent of their coverage. Um, I move areas, different areas every day and go to these, see if everybody's got their license and, uh, mm -hmm go after complaints and stuff like that. But wouldn't be guns anyways, it would be bows and arrows, archery only. But um, bow hunters, uh, you've got to be a little bit more secretive and I'm sure they're not going to want to be hunting in areas that have extensive use, extensive trail use. One thing, the turkeys are going to be there, they're, they're, they're going to more or less stay away from established trails. I think the commission had a wonderful idea of doing a site visit, and I would uh, hope and encourage that you all would do that to get a that's, better. That's where I think we're heading. I think I, I'd want to, at least most of the commissioners would like to get out there and take a look at the trail system before we make a decision. Right, good. 
at least on this section of the, uh, the land use regulation. As far as rain will reach it, people pretty much set on that. This section of the Greenway will definitely would like to see. We change that section of the uh, land use. That's, anyone else have any comments? I would. John, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. My name is John Faraday. I live off of Ice Pond Drive, uh, right around the corner from Old Wilson Road. I'm a trail runner. I'm probably on the trails uh, easily three to five times a week. Um, I'm sure I've waved to many of the folks like Renee. I'm also a volunteer. I work with Tom, help uh, with uh, maintain those trails and help with pruning and, and all that. Um, you know, that area across from where I live, um, across 66, um, by that uh, by the Tennessee Gas or Columbia Gas, whatever it is now, Eversource, they, they've been changing hands. Um, I've seen a lot of people through there. Um, I've seen people on bikes. I've seen young kids now. Um, so, you know, put the golf course aside. That is an area that's getting a lot more use. I think the irony of this discussion, quite frankly, is that since I've lived here, I've never used the golf course because it was private land, and I respected that. Um, I love running as a runner. I love golf courses. You know, in fact, a lot of cross country meets are on golf is for that reason. Um, this is a tremendous resource. I can't tell you enough during this era of the pandemic how grateful I am um, that the city has preserved this property and has partnered with Mass Audubon. It has done wonders for my own mental health, not to mention physical health. Um, I can't even imagine, and let me say this, okay, I'm a retired military veteran. I've been around guns. I've hunted. I don't consider myself a hunter now. I've evolved from that. I understand wildlife conservation issue. I understand the debate. Um, and, you know, I've had hunters in my family. I know, you know, they love being outdoors. They encourage the protection of wildlife. On the flip side, I've known hunters who have been highly irresponsible. I'm not going to go there, but I think the crux of this that I think our, what we're trying to tell you is that this is not the property for that kind of activity. There's lots of private land. There's lots of areas in Western Massachusetts where you can bow hunt. This is not a good property for that. Uh, so <laughs> around 3, 30, 4 o'clock today, I was down on the back area where that storage shed, where they, you know, uh, off of um, Route 10 that was recently put in. I'm running down the trail down there that way and uh, saw a beautiful black bear. And it just saw me and lumbered back into the woods. Um, I've seen wild turkey, I have seen deer. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful area. Um, I, I would be very unnerved um, to be running through that area knowing that there's a bow hunter in the area. You know, I know they've, they've had stands that have been taken down. Um, and I agree with the comments about uh, how are you going to enforce it? How are you going to regulate that? I know in about a week's time, they're going to you're going to see pickup trucks parked over by the power lines. They do it every year. I call the city. Yeah, the game wardens. It still happens. I've I've heard um, gunshots. Um, so it does happen. Um, the other thing that I think is important. Um, for the Conservation Commission is that the neighborhood, and Rosie, maybe if you want to comment on this, is there's been some turnover recently where there's a lot of younger kids I've noticed. You know, our ice pond, there's a lot of younger families and they're starting to use that, that area. Just on there the other day, I saw two two young uh, young children, seeing children with the, with dogs. You know, this, it's, this is not the place for, for any kind of hunting activity. Um, you know, I, I understand and appreciate um, I think it was Mr. Perry's comments, but uh, there's there's plenty of other conservation areas or wildlife areas for this type of use. Um, if you were to go that route, I would like to see how you're going to regulate this. I don't think you're prepared for that at this time and how you're going to ensure public safety for folks like me who use the area on a near daily basis. And then 
I guess the final thing is I just want to extend my thanks to each and one, every one of you for your volunteer work. I, I realize and appreciate your fellow citizens. You do this on a paid basis, and I'm grateful for that. And I have publicly thanked Wayne Fiden and Tom Neese over, over the years for the great work they do. So I just want to say thank you. And thank you for allowing us to have this discussion with you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. But uh, yeah, you brought up a good point. I've noticed a lot of younger people now using, I, I live near a multi-use trail in the Florence area and notice a lot more um, kids walking the trail with, with their parents. It's a good, it's a good thing, it's a beautiful walk. Uh, put your mind at ease, walk through the woods, walk the trails. Uh, where are we going to go with this, commissioners? You want to take a look at the trail system before we make a decision on the sector of regulations? I agree with that. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Um, how do the other commissioners feel? They want to see this, um, see the trails more of a extensive look at the property before we make a decision. Yeah, I think it's worth walking them. Like I say, I, I've walked the golf course trails before they were reconstructed. Um, because even then, and once the golf course was closed, it was a great place to go for a hike. But uh, but I haven't wandered to see how, how the trails have evolved. Like I said, in my concern is that if it's a really nice set of trails, it's going to get a lot of use. And uh, that's not that consistent with hunting. Okay, so I think, um, Sarah, we can set up a time when we get out there. Um, in the meantime, I'll entertain a motion to um, continue the hearing. Um, do you want to add something just really quickly? Sure. If we're going to um, go do a site visit, could we also use the time, the interim time to try to get a little bit more clear information on the historic use of the property? I'm just kind of curious. Yep. Um, I I hear everyone's comments and um, really appreciate them. And I would just like to understand kind of where we're fitting into kind of changing historic uses over time, um, both for this property, but just as a broader thing. I think that's an important piece of this puzzle that it doesn't seem like we have clear knowledge of from here. So, and I would like to see the uh, proposed. Um... Greenway Trail uh, superimposed on the, on the plan that we have, Sarah, so that, um, that's the main trail that we're going to be concerned with. I realize there's, there's a trail system already in place there. I'm not sure if we have anything on that, but see what, and then take, take the walk, see what's out there. So if we could, uh, Calendar in November is a little challenging because both of our regularly scheduled meeting dates are holidays. Um, so I, if two weeks is enough time for the commission, that would be October 28th. Yeah, I, I can get out there pretty easily. Suggest uh, we do have a few hearings on the agenda, so I'd suggest maybe 6.15 as a time. I like that. Make that a motion. So moved. That okay. would be hearing would be continued until when, sir? October 28th at 6 15. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll move that. I think Jen seconded. All those uh, uh, in favor? Uh, roll call. Uh, roll call, correct. So Mason? Yes. Alec? Yes. Randy? Yes. Jen? Yes. And Jason? Yes. All right. Thanks very much. Thanks, everyone, for showing up tonight. Thank you. And, and Mason and Sarah, I have to drop off for a call with the Vancouver folks. Um, but you still have quorum, right? Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thanks very much, Randy. OK. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Just to say one last thing for the Christians, which is that you might want to allow a couple of hours to uh, 
for you when you review the trails because they're pretty extensive. Um, it, it can usually take a couple of hours to go through all of them. Good point. I don't have a problem with that because I'm retired. <laughs> Uh, I'll just add that it's it's absolutely wonderful to hear that people are getting out there and enjoying this property. I mean, that's that's great. Next, somebody's going to have to pick me up, probably. I think in the plan um, there is a plan for a parking area um, for six cars. I've read the master plan. Uh, that's not there now, but um, I don't know if that's going to be put together in the future. But um, right now, well, we tried we. We try to get access and parking for our major trails. Right. Okay. Thank Sometimes you. there's more cars than we can handle. But right. Especially during the pandemic, there's been a real, real use of the trail system in the city. A lot of multi-use trails. When I the one I walk is also, you know, you get bikes, but everybody's everybody's nice. Let you know when they're coming up on you. And, um, with uh, dogs, have if they're not on leash, they're very well controlled. Always, everybody picks up after the dog. Working out good. We have a trail system. We get the number one trail around the perimeter of the city. We're going to be quite a system. Got a lot of land that the. Uh, the uh, commission is in stages of acquiring about over what over two thousand acres now, Sarah. Uh, well over that at this yeah. point. It's good. Quite a nice plan for the city. Thank you. Thank you for uh, your comments. Okay, we have. Um, Minutes to approve. Or do you want to do that, Sarah? Or should we move into Mont, Mont View? I, I know there's some people here from Meadow City Conservation Coalition who've been waiting um, for quite some time and, and are anxious okay, to why don't we present go their, their updated plan so we can do the minutes last. No problem. Okay, let's go into the Mont View. Mont View plan, um, and who do we have from the CCP that's going to speak for them? I, I don't think you're all going to talk at once, but uh, Fred, uh, can you explain the uh, latest changes that you've made? And it's a very nice report, by the way. Uh, my name is Fred Zimnock. I live on, can you hear me? No, wait a minute. Can you hear me? Yep. Uh, my name is Fred Zimnock and I live on Pomeroy Terrace. I'm a member of the Meadow City Conservation Coalition, but I believe uh, Mac is here and uh, he's over on the right. I can see him moving his uh, <laughs> hand. So I think he's probably more capable to speak about this and the myriad of details than I am. So I will uh, pass my time to uh, Mac. Okay, Mac, you're on. Okay, are you hearing me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, my name on the screen is Claudia Lefko, but that's my wife, I'm using her computer. So I just <laughs> wanted to make that clear. Uh, yeah, so I'm a member of the MCCC board and I'm also an abutter to the property in question, the Montview Conservation Area. And I'm one of the several authors who worked on the plan before you. And the plan is actually not all that different from the plan preceding it that went into effect in 2016. And that plan was designed with the guidance of Laurie Sanders, who helped us to try to come up with a plan that would create good wildlife conservation area, as well as the agricultural and the playfield areas that are there. So there's not a whole lot of change in the plan. Uh, there's a few things that we had originally set out to do that we decided would be too much at this point, 
um, because one of our board members was a, a professional conservation person, had a lot of energy and he left. So we're, but we're still in the process of trying to uh, develop neighborhood interests in the land and hopefully get uh, a subcommittee of folks who are willing to uh, help with the, the work that we're doing on the land. I mean, basically we're, you know, the main things that we've done over the past years are to create, a, create and maintain the trail system there, um, to, you know, remove invasive species, add some native plants. We have the rotational brush hogging system that's uh, described in the document so that we can maintain the meadow area. Um, and uh, yeah, and then we've been working on the agricultural area. We've been through several different leases with the help of both Tom and East and the Agricultural Commission. We currently have the uh, Somali refugee farmers who are growing crops over there and that has been going, going quite well. Um, and we have the neighborhood play field, which is a really popular and very well used spot where people come and get together informally to play games or have picnics or whatever. And so part of our role has also been helping the, the community to understand what kinds of activities are okay there and what kinds are not and what kinds would require Conservation Commission permission. So um, that's basically what we've been up to. And, uh, you know, I'd be happy to uh, go on with more detail about any questions you might have about the, the document. And I also, some, I see Jane, Jane on the screen. Jane, our president, she may want to make some comments as well. Well, thank you. Well, Jane, you want, you want something to say? Uh, yeah, thank, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yep. yeah, thank you very much. And thanks, Max, that's a nice, um, that's a nice summary. The plan is not really very different, but I guess what I would like to do is just state again the goals that we have for Montview, which um, which you you the Conservation Commission gave their blessing to when we came out with the first plan in 2016, and that is that um, our hope is to maintain the function of the wetland and enhance wildlife habitat. We want to provide an inviting and safe place for passive recreation to the public. We want to um, and have successfully returned a small portion of the land to farming. Um, and Tom and Anise has been very helpful working with us to make sure that we can do that. And we also have enjoyed the generosity of the Agricultural Commission um, for their advice and their help with brush hogging. Um, so that's felt like a very successful collaboration and we hope to continue it. And, as Mac mentioned, I think what we're trying to do is incorporate the very best conservation practices based on expert advice. So again, we started all of this with Laurie Sanders and with um, Alex Crofta, who, um, as Mac mentioned, he left us, but unfortunately he went on to another job um, as a professional ecologist elsewhere, but he still um, is able and willing to help us. And, and last, but equally important is we hope to continue to work effectively with you, the Conservation Commission, and with the city of Northampton to be able to carry out the goals of this conservation restriction on this um, lovely piece of land that gets lots of use. Hey. Yeah. Commissioners read the report. Do you have any comments on, on the report? I thought it was well put together. Easy and has pictures. <laughs> well, you don't want to read all the words. But um, I guess we're, re we're required to approve this, um, Sarah? So this is the relationship with Meadow City Conservation Coalition is a little bit unique among our, our partners um, in that they have some affirmative responsibilities and also get to do some additional things beyond just building trails and the, the more typical sort of arrangement. Um, so just to make sure that there's enough neighborhood involvement and that, that people are on board and, and that um, they're 
they're doing basically exactly what they've described they're doing. Um, the, the commission gets to re review uh, the report every number of years. So if um, you know if the commission thinks that this is an appropriate use of the property and that everything's going well, um, then I definitely encourage you to do that and to ask any questions that you might have if, if things are unresolved or if you're not quite sure. What? Um, I'm curious. Um, I, I know what a tag sale is, but I'm not sure what other social events you're um, referring to. Were you? Yeah, I, the report? I would have to say there, there haven't been very many more formal events there. Uh, recently, somebody got in touch with us and asked if they could hold a concert over there. And that was a little bit beyond the level of an informal activity. So I told them that uh, they would need to get in touch with the Conservation Commission in order to find out if that was an appropriate use or not. And in fact, it was really short notice. And I think, uh, I think they were gonna get in touch with Sarah and she was out of town, so it didn't happen. But basically we're trying, you know, pe people see this open space and they get lots of different ideas about what might happen there. And some of them really seem appropriate. Like we'd like to encourage, for example, nature related workshops or, you know, birding activities or plant identification, stuff like that, that we feel would enhance the use of the property. But then, you know, people also sometimes bring up ideas that don't, as I'm sure you're familiar with in other properties too, aren't necessarily in keeping with the mission. So we have that conversation with them and, uh, we, I do a lot with the, we have a neighborhood listserv uh, that serves a lot of the abutters around the property and I try to do a lot with just keeping them educated and informed about what ways they can use the land, what are the best uses of it, and encourage them to ask questions. And we have posters to that effect up on the property. I, the thing with this property is it's it's kind of a fishbowl. It's surrounded by a lot of people. And even though it's a small property, there's a lot of abutters around it. And so we see that there's a, a need for, and, and, and as some of you mentioned, there's been a turnover in uh, younger families moving in. So there's a kind of ongoing process of trying to keep people aware of you know, who owns the land and what's allowed there and what's what interesting things are happening there uh, in terms of ecology. And, and you know, we, we also have been through a lot with trying to help people understand the concept of habitat there. Um, because, you know, when we originally had conversations about how to care for the land, there was definitely a really wide range of uh, opinions ranging all the way from don't do anything at all, just leave it, don't remove invasives, don't do anything on the one extreme to let's make it look like a freshly cut hay field or you know, a farm field. And we actually had originally submitted a plan to you to do that. And then you all said, wait a minute, let's talk about creating a better quality habitat. So that's what led to the, uh, the rotational brush hogging scheme so that we would leave vegetation standing over the winter for, uh, you know, for seeds, for birds and for insects that are laying eggs and so forth. So I guess I'm being, I'm going on a little bit, but part of what I'm saying is there's, we're trying really to have an ongoing educational function uh, to keep everybody around aware of this property that's so close to downtown and so accessible what are the parameters for using it properly? And also I was gonna add that Fred uh, Zimnock has, uh, he's our, our conduit to the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association. So he attends those meetings and gets our information out um, to the Ward 3, the larger Ward 3 community. And we try, if we're gonna, if we have any work days coming up or there's anything interesting happening at the land, I try to post it on the neighborhood listserv frequently so that people have a sense of what it's all about there. Yeah, I, I got involved um, with that area early on with the yeah. wet, wetland delineation, looking at the wetland aspects of it, um, yeah. walking, walking the property years ago before you come up with a uh, commission. Yeah. 
care of it. Well, it's, uh, it was an interesting kind of semi-diverse wetland at the time. So you yeah. see the agricultural um, influence on the wetland, the early wetland. Yeah. And certainly there was room for improvement as far as the wetland aspects. Mm -hmm. And I see that that coming to fruition now. Mm -hmm. So uh, you guys are doing a good job. Well, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Matt or Jane, could you speak a little bit about how the, the agricultural license is working currently and whether that's that's a good experience for you and the, and the farmers? I know that that's been something that's posed a lot of challenges because it's a small site. It's a it's a challenging site. Um, you've had a lot of turnover. Um, and I, but I know the Agricultural Commission is able to help you. Yeah, no, they've that. been very helpful. Thanks for asking about that, Sarah. Um, I think the challenges um, for anybody who wants to farm that area is that, first of all, there's no water. <laughs> um, there's not really any parking for it, kind of any major operation. Um, but what, what we can say with confidence is that the, the soil is incredible. So the yields that come out of that soil, even with farmers who say they can't do it anymore for whatever reason, um, they've, they've, they've been very pleased with what they've been able to grow there. This was obviously a very strange summer, a very same, strange growing season just because of all the rain. It was um, okay if you had rice, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. So I don't know how the, Mac, I think you had a couple of conversations maybe with the farmers this year. I don't know how they were feeling about this particular growing season. Well, I spoke with Hassan, who's one of the farmers just about a week or so ago, and the crops were growing well, but they had a real challenge with raccoons this summer <laughs> in their corn. They grow, they grow a type of corn that is grown specifically for cornmeal. So it has to stay on the corn stalk a lot longer. And last year, it seemed like they got a great crop. And then this year, the raccoons figured out what was going on. But uh, they were also growing, Hassan also grows um, tomatoes and peppers and different types of squash. So, um, and they, they've been thrilled to use that land because they've leased some other land around the valley that's not as fertile. And the land kind of blew their mind at how you know, how luscious and full their crops were growing. And, you know, I have to say that uh, the Ag Commission has been really helpful because uh, Richard Jeske came and he prepared the soil for them. First he, you know, he plowed it up and then he harrowed it. And so it gave them, a because they're, they're basically using all hand tools. They don't have any yeah. power equipment. So the fact that he did that for them, got them off to a good start both last year and this year. And I think this year he has said he would like to also plant a cover crop in the fall, uh, which would be really nice so that the, the land isn't bare. But basically that the relationship between Tom and East and uh, the farmers are part of a, the group called All Farmers. They have a website called allfarmers.world. And uh, they're, the farmers themselves live in Northern Connecticut and the Springfield area, and they commute up here to do this. And their kind of core, their activities are coordinated by all farmers. And uh, yeah, they, I mean, it's been very smooth. Uh, occasionally also Hassan has, if he's had extra produce, he'll set up a stand, you know, for a Sunday afternoon or something to see if the neighbors are interested in buying some of his produce or whatever. But it's been, it's been a very, um, very easy relationship. Um, and yeah, I think that despite, as Jane said, the lack of water on site, that they, the, the soil holds water reasonably well. Oh. And also they got into bringing water with them sometimes last year when it wasn't so, so wet. But that hasn't seemed to have been a problem for them so far. And before them, we had, um, we had a, a gentleman who was uh, growing peppers on a commercial scale. And I think selling a lot of them to the pickling plant up in South Deerfield. Yeah. And we had a garlic farmer as well. So um, basically, the, I think the leases have gone well. You know, Richard Jeske is uh, just kind of a pocket farmer himself. He's, he's got that area between entrances. 
Up and center there. I don't know if he has other properties that he that he farms, but but like this little model farm himself. Yeah. yeah. But, and you know. it's, it was really touching to see how he was willing to come with all his big equipment to get these people started off right and just did it for free. You know, he didn't yeah. charge anybody anything. So yep, nice guy. Okay, um, there are any other questions, uh, comments? I assume we need a uh, formal vote on this, Sarah, to approve, approve the, uh, the upgraded management plan for the conservation area at Mount View. Is there any public comment on this? Please, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm Dora Lewis and I, I'm an abutter of the property. And I just wanna say first and foremost, bowing big time to Mac and to Jane and MC3 and all the work and Fred. I mean, really it's been amazing. And Mac with all his emails and you know all of his work, he's out there all the time working on that property and trying to get people to be on the property and to help. And it, you guys are just amazing. And, and Jim and I are eternally grateful. Um, for all the effort that you put in and, um, and how the property has been maintained. Um, I, I had one small question. It's not a concern, just a question. And that has to do with the plan on the bottom of the management unit one. Um, and it shows the number three um, to be conducted without prior conservation commission approval, number three, cutting or girding of trees that exceed 10 feet in height only within the central open area of the wetland. Mm -hmm. And and basically what I'm looking at is my backyard. And I wanted to make sure that that was intentional or or what I just was surprised when I saw it. But again, not a concern, just a clarifying, trying to understand. Yeah. Um, I think at one point, you know, in, in the beginning conversations about uh, caring for this land back way back, there was talk about the viewscape and keeping things open so people can see through the property and so forth. And um, there was some concern expressed that if uh, trees grew in the center of the wetland that that would be an a visual obstruction. And right. so I think that's why that was originally put in there. Uh, as it turns out, that really hasn't been an issue. There really haven't been any trees growing right in the middle of the wetland. So it's, it's in fact, I would say in the time that this plan has been in effect, we really haven't done anything with the wetland at all, except to keep an eye on it, basically. I do yeah. remember well those conversations about not wanting lots of trees to grow up on that side of the property to block the view of all those abutters. But I'm just curious, like the central open area that's delineated in white um, is our backyard. Oh, it's actually your backyard? Correct. <laughs> well, then we wouldn't touch anything in your backyard. Yeah, I know you wouldn't. And again, Mac, I'm not concerned. I'm asking yeah. for clarification. I yeah. didn't know if that was a mistake or if that was something, I mean, I was Glad to see that if 10 feet tree grows in my backyard, I'm allowed to cut it down, but I just didn't right. know if that was an, uh, what, was an error or what. So that I'm just looking for clarification. Yes, I think that, that yeah. I live in the house then that's right there on the yes. street. Yeah. I think okay. that's the wrong, um, the, the, the white, it, it's the wrong delineated area, first of all. Yep. We must, we, we put the wrong photo in there, I think. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm looking yeah, at that. That's not wetlands right there, I don't think. Right, the wetlands are off to the left in the in the gray. Yes. Yeah. Right. And I yeah. think the, the, the original concern, I think, was um, um, the amount of, of sumac that was down there. Yeah. That, that, that could be a possible issue of starting to crouch in on the wetland yeah. prior years. Yeah. I noticed throughout the uh, the plan the the mention of controlling the sumac. Yeah, the sumac uh, tends to travel by clone underground and can quickly overtake the meadow and turn it into a stand of of sumac. Yeah. yeah. 
But Dora, Dora, I see what your point is. And I think there is an error on that map if, and it extends a little too far into your property. Yeah, it looks yeah. like, um, Go ahead, now I'm just, I'm looking at the, the previous plan uh, and it looks like the graphic just got switched in the updated plan. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so the, this is the prior plan with the same language and essentially the same graphic, but it, there it's, you go. it's showing it in the proper that's areas. Right. Yeah. That yeah. graphic yeah. should just get replaced. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Again, no worries. Just wanted clarification. No, thanks, Dora. We did. We, that, that's our error. No worries. Thank, thank you all again for all of your work. You're all amazing. Appreciate it. Okay. There's no other comments. Then uh, I just can I uh, ask a a quick question? Sure. Uh, I I can't remember whether this is a three year or five year plan. Uh, I think it started out as a five year plan, if I'm not mistaken. Um, was the option of three or five? Did we go with the five on that side? Uh, the specific requirement for a, um, a specific time frame, um, but as MCCC started doing some consulting with Lori and others, and that seemed like an, an appropriate amount of time. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Mac. Gene, but I, I think that's how it works. Right. Um, so, if, you know, if, if five years makes sense and there's five years of activities called out here, then five years seems like another appropriate time frame. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that would, uh, in this, the brush hogging scheme is set up until for three years, but that's easy to adjust. We can add two more years if we need to. We we'll just continue the same pattern of rotation. Yeah, this goes up to 2024. Also, oh, it was a three year plan. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I think the first year or the first time you guys started. Uh, I to remember it was a five-year plan, but um, be wrong. How does the commission feel? Want a five-year plan or a three-year plan? I don't see any other commissioners on the screen, so I don't. I feel in our bylaws that uh, restrict it to three years, Sarah? No, this isn't a, a regulatory agreement or a license, so there's there's no specific restriction. Mm -hmm. We can approve it for uh, five years if you want. Just feel comfortable with that, and I'll entertain a motion for. Uh, Approval of the uh, conservation area monitor plan for five years. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Okay, hey, Sarah. No. Oh. Uh, Mason? Yes. Allie? Yes. Jen? Yes. And Jason? Yes. Thank you. Okay. It's been approved and reviewed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you all. Oh, again. Thank you for all your work that you do. We really appreciate it and are glad to be partners. Thank you. You guys have a good evening. You too. <laughs> Thank you very much from Meadow City Conservation Coalition. You're welcome. Up the good work. <laughs>
Uh, just one. Just we actually, one. we approved minutes far past this, but for some reason, these never got approved. And April. The date I was not at that meeting, so I'll have to abstain. So, um, so we can push these off till next time, then. No, no problem at all, um, because we want a quorum to vote. Okay. But that's that all is right. Let's thing. let's table those then. Do we have to vote on that? Nope. Okay. Table that. Anything else? Uh, any violations going on? Um, what's the news on the one that's out there? Uh, so I that one's a little bit complicated. So I'm still working with the city solicitor and uh, having a hard time getting in touch with Natural Heritage to coordinate that enforcement. So is it complicated? That will be moving forward. Complicated because the landowner's neighbor did the clearing? Or, or Correct. Correct. They haven't shot each other yet? No. <laughs> They've, no, um, and Jason and a couple other people actually also alerted me to a violation regarding some mowing, um, actually adjacent to the bridge replacement that got approved on Haydenville Road. And that's another one where I'm trying to coordinate closely with Natural Heritage. Um, so there was actually, I don't have any computer, but the, uh, the, the owner of the golf course basically mowed most of the riverfront and bordered vegetated wetland area along Beaver Brook. Um, and unlike the situation on the Connecticut River, where it seemed like you know, the, the only mitigation there was to restore the area, this is something that potentially could be allowed if it was being done with habitat improvement in mind, but there currently isn't any plan to do that. Um, so I, I wanted to check with, the, with Natural Heritage on that one. As well. yeah, I'm surprised if it's, if, unless it's a new owner, because the, uh, the other one is uh, pretty up front with Angels. Yeah, the, the golf course sold. So this isn't part of golf course management at all. This is outside the limits of the golf course. So I'm, I'm not quite sure why uh, it's being done at all, unless it's just to keep tree growth down, which again, potentially is not a bad thing. Uh, but there are some endangered species there and that would need appropriate time of year restrictions, which I, I don't think would, I think they're just outside of that. So that might end up being more natural heritage enforcement than it is. Well, you, you haven't contacted the owner yet? Or? Uh, no, I want. I didn't want to contact them separately and then have Natural Heritage do something on their own. I wanted whatever. Oh, I see. To be okay. coordinated and. Yeah, he may. Was he aware that there was a Natural Heritage area there? Uh, I. He is aware of the the wetlands area. He we've told him in the past that he couldn't do any mowing without a, a right. mowing plan. Um, and that that was last year, but he he did do that again this year, yeah. so that it will definitely be some, some type of violation, be it wetlands or endangered species or both. Okay, they're tougher than we are. They are, yes. Their fines can also carry some jail time, which are some. Oh, wow, okay. Kind of hard to putt from jail cell. Okay, if there's nothing else, thank you for being here. Next time your old boss will be back. Thank you for taking over, Mason. Yeah, I thank appreciate you. That. I haven't done it before. No great shakes, but I'm glad that I'm not the chairman. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Good night. Thank you very much, everybody. See you in two weeks. Thank right. you. Have a good night, everybody.